In the last couple of weeks, I have put every single alcohol marker in existence in a fight to the death to see which is the best. Now, those videos were a long time coming. They took five months to put together and it was very exciting and thrilling. Click on the link in the card or in the description to go watch them. But in the course of exploring those markers, a couple of times, I accidentally purchased or stumbled upon water-based markers. But it did beg the question, after I went through all of this with the alcohol markers, why do alcohol markers get the preferred treatment when there are plenty of usable and quality water-based markers we could compare? The answer is because they're non-alcoholic, which is always more boring. <laughs> No, the answer is, of course, because alcohol markers can do cool things that water-based markers can't. So, then I thought to myself, why not do a little bit of a comparison of the water-based markers that I have to see which of the ones I happen to have are best, and with another mini head-to-head -head battle to the death, find out which performs the best, and also compare them directly to alcohol-based markers to sort of, I guess, really identify why I prefer one over the other, but also what it is that they do differently and how that affects my choices. Now, in Marker Madness, these were the two brands that I mistakenly thought were alcohol-based that were indeed water-based. Prism brush markers and then the Crayola brush markers. Aside from those, I have a whole bunch in the cupboard that I've used in other videos. I have good old classic connector pen. These that apparently I can't open, but these are the Monty Mart adult colouring duo markers. We have Faber Castell 10 grip colour markers. And then we have adult colouring amazing flexi tip. Top tip, dip the markers in a little water to get a lighter tone. You can't do that with alcohol markers. It doesn't say dip your marker in vodka. Yeah, no, don't do that. These are two pieces I did with alcohol-based markers, and there are a few effects here I just want to point out that you can't really do, from my experience, with water-based markers. For example, here on the left, we have my Egyptian Wendigo character. The blood, in particular, is uh, the, the biggest example of, of the value of alcohol markers. I shaded this entire character's skin and fur in this grey colour first, and then I went on top with the red. Now, if I try to lay that with water-based markers, as you will see later, maybe, it tends to not layer well, and also the more ink you put down, or the more water-based ink you put down, the more it actually breaks up the, uh, the fabric of the paper, so to speak. Over here we have my Cyborg Demon, and these glowing effects were achieved by using some light blues and then using alcohol-based, just alcohol, alcohol-based alcohol. -based alcohol. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You can use just blending alcohol to soften and push back colors. So by creating gradients towards a strong internal color, you can also soften the outside and create cool glowing effects. And as you can see in general, there's like a touch of lighting over the skin here, just this light blue color in places. That was all just done with a single blue color laid over the layers of shading that I already built up. It layers really well and you can get really cool effects and, and lighting. So I wanna see what I can do and how close I can mimic those effects with water-based markers today. And the other Another thing I want to do later in this video is create a persona for the one I pick as the winner. So those of you who watched Mark and Madness will remember I made the personas for the four finalists. I thought this was a really fun exercise, so I'll do that later with the marker I pick, but we'll get to that. Speaking of later, somewhere in this video I have hidden a $50 Amazon gift card. I've done it a few times before. They look like this. This one's been claimed in a previous video, and I'm getting pretty sneaky with how I hide them because you guys are bloody good at finding them. So make sure to keep a sharp eye on as we explore through our markers because maybe if you find that little goodie you can snatch it for yourself but of course if you miss out on that one i'm doing this a lot lately so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications ticked on so you can get it early and snatch it next time and i'm doing a lot of fun giveaways lately too so make sure you are subscribed and you come back to future videos for your chance to uh get involved in the arty party all right so what do we have here this is the uh the monty mart adult coloring brand first impressions on the markers as they feel and they do have one tip. It is a brush tip though, and that's not bad. All right, I take back my initial skepticism. We immediately run into the issue that I mentioned, which is where as soon as I start to saturate the ink, you can actually see the fibers of the paper pick up onto the pen, literally tearing the paper apart with the ink, and you have to sort of rub it off, which is a real bummer. So with that said, these feel pretty good, and the brush tip is quite nice because I can be accurate 
and I can get some line away variation too. And the colors are pretty cool too. Obviously the breaking up of the paper is a distinct disadvantage, but one of the ways that using water-based markers could be quite useful is sort of in a mixed media sense. So let's say for example, I have a cube. There you go. That's an amazing cube. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, the studio audience is enthusiastic today. You guys shouldn't be here, guys. It's COVID-19. Meter and a half apart, all of you, everyone. I'm slowly going insane during the lockdown. <laughs> anyway, let's draw the same cube with an alcohol-based marker. If I want to color my water-based marker with alcohol-based ink, I can, and I'm not getting any smearing or anything like that because the alcohol-based ink is not disrupting the water-based ink. So let's do the exact same thing with our alcohol-based ink. As you can see, and it's not too obvious straight away, but as soon as I start applying more ink, the alcohol starts to mix in a little more. You can see that uh, the edges of the alcohol ink are sort of blending into the alcohol ink I've just laid down. Now that would be worse if the alcohol ink hadn't dried, but that is an advantage and disadvantage of alcohol-based inks. You can come back to an artwork and continue to work on it and sort of wake up the alcohol ink you've already put down weeks or years ago, but then you also are limited in how you can use it to uh, build your pieces if you don't want to disturb what you've got going on. All right, so let's play with a few more of these markers. We have the Faber-Castell 10 grip color markers. But they don't feel great. Uh, there's no pressure sensitivity, and at least with the, the brush nibs of the Faber-Castell ones I just used, you can be a little lighter with how you apply the color, and you can apply it over broader areas. Whereas with these, the awful thing about bullet nib water-based markers is it's really hard to very evenly fill in an area of color, and it's near impossible to do it with subtlety. So I'm gonna remove these from the running, because they are not my favorites. Monty Mart adult cut. Wait, didn't I do Monty Mart? That is Monty Mart. These are double tipped. Monty Mart, you sly dog. Now these feel a little better. And I mean, 20 bucks as opposed to 12 bucks. Double the amount of markers with two tips on each marker for not more than double the price is a lot better value. Monty Mart, you've been outdone by Monty Mart. I like doing that. I edit out the bit where I go pick it all up, but it's just, it's a fun bit of flair. Oh, connector pens. I have a love-hate relationship with you because on the one hand, you have these useless, awful, terrible quality bullet tips and ink that doesn't blend or lay in well and tears up the page nearly instantly. But on the other hand, pew, 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 pew. That's what actually got me through all of my high school classes. As cool as they are to pew 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 with, I'm not gonna go through the rounds with these because they're just not gonna hold up against alcohol markers. And that's what this video is about. Moment of silence for our fallen comrades. Next up, we have the Crayola. First impression as far as using these goes, feel really good. Look how even and smooth this is compared to the old connector pens. So these are gonna progress in the rounds, which leaves only prism markers. And let me immediately just say these things are amazing. Like, again, the glimpse I got accidentally of them was that they're really good. Which leaves us with a lineup of prism, Crayola, and Monty Mark. So what I want to do now is take some of those effects and comparisons with the alcohol marker artworks that I've done and see if I can use water-based markers to replicate some of those effects. So let's start off with this lovely queenly lady. By the way, all of the images I'll be working with, both that I'm coloring onto, but also that I've shown you that I've already colored in, they're all available in my online digital coloring in book. So I'll link to that in the description as well. Feel free to go check that out. It's only a couple of bucks and if you're stuck in quarantine, good way to have a bit of fun, practice your coloring and also support me in the channel, which would be amazing. So I'm gonna slap in a few colors. I'm gonna use my Ohuhus on the left. I'm gonna keep it pretty basic because I wanna get through a few experiments. But the first thing I wanna demonstrate is the layering of alcohol marks. So in this case, I might go really fair skin and I'm just going to lay down my lighter skin tone like this. So while it's still slightly wet, I'm going in with a colorless blender and just throwing that around the edges. I'm just heavily saturating just to soften the transition between the white and my light skin tone. That'll continue to dry. I'm just gonna grab my slightly darker light skin tone here. I'm just gonna put in just a few little bits of shading. Doesn't have to be fancy at all. But as you can see, the strength of the layering is just really nice. Now this is where a bigger collection of alcohol markers is useful because if I had something between that light skin tone and the white, let's say in my Copics, which I think I do, you can create smoother blends just by going a little bit over towards those edges and creating that little bit of blending and it makes those gradients much smoother. The other thing is I'm just gonna color the whole corset in a flat purple. I'm gonna grab this darker purple 
Pick a side over here, so it'll be where my shadow is. Go back to my original color and blend while it's wet. I can really lay in and really thickly apply this alcohol ink and it's not wrecking the paper. And look at that, that is actually a really smooth blend between those two purple colors with simply two markers. On top of that, because you can layer so much, I could grab something like this really vibrant pink. With every second one of these sections, just fill that in and it's maintaining the value or the darkness of the areas that I've already filled in. But wait, there's more. But I won't go through more right now because it's time to give the water base colors a go. I'm just gonna do a bit of an experiment on the hand there. I'll let that dry because it's obviously gonna rip up the paper if I apply too much. I'm gonna try layering in this darker tone. Already, just with that second layer, I feel the paper starting to object. And if I were to come in here and just try and I feel like I'm holding my breath here. And I also can't soften it. So you can start to see the texture and lines where I've laid it down. And even if I go back to my original color and just try and soften that transition and create a little bit of a blending look, there's a limit to how much I can do this. And it's still uh, a bit of a harsh aesthetic. Let's move on and see how it goes with the layering. Again, that first layer feels like magic. Absolutely great. This is where it gets hairy. Next layer. Uh, okay, a bit of a minute to dry. Don't wanna. <laughs> Stress it. Next layer. Ooh, paper's starting to break up a bit. I don't think I can push it any further. Do you know what? One more. Can't help it. Oh, the paper is not a fan of me, but it worked. All right, let's see if we can layer and get a similar effect to what we have here with a bright pink. Oh boy. Okay, yeah. Again, the, the paper's not a fan, but it's not the worst thing in the world. In fact, there's a sort of accidental tonal variation in this gradient that is visually quite interesting and coloring in the whole piece with water-based markers could result in something cool maybe let's give it a go And I end up with a little something like this. Now that's actually not too bad, but then as soon as you start looking a little closer, there's a lot of streaks and it's really hard to get a flat color. That said, for water-based markers, these prism markers were really cool. Part of me was wishing I had more colors to work with to get more even blends, but at the same time, then you're just getting into this territory where you have like a hundred markers to get even blends when really you'd just be better off buying a pack of 30 alcohol markers to get better blends. Anyway, this was fun. Next markers, next exercise. That's gonna be a while to clean up. Oh no, we've got the mismatch, the cap colors are matte and swap. Why do I do this to myself? All right, next let's play with uh, a few fancy effects for a second. So on our left, we have this lightning effect I've done with markers on my cyborg demon. On the right, I have my 80s cyborg Egyptian pharaoh dude. He's got a similar pose happening, but no effects. I wanna see if I can create those effects using the water-based marker. I'll do this with the Monty Mark. So I'm gonna start off with my lightest color brush marker and I'm going to do what I did with my alcohol markers. I'm going to create a path of lightning around the character. This is going to be sort of slightly random but so feels like actual lightning. There's no way I can soften this so I'm pretty limited in how I can make this look cool. I'm going to move in to the next blue. This one works pretty well. But again the paper is already <laughs> having some trouble. How extreme can we get? I'm going to go one more layer in with this dark blue because this will create the best contrast when I add the white on top, which I'm just going to be doing with this white gel pen. I'm just going to draw some white on the dead center here. Now, there we have a result and it's not terrible, but it, as you can see, it certainly lacks the subtlety of the alcohol market. So in conclusion, I'm sort of where I was when I started. There are some limitations, but there are some also effective applications. So I'm interested in your thoughts in the comments down below. What are some useful ways that you can use water-based markers and how they might in some instances be better than alcohol markers? I'm genuinely curious if, if there's a trick I'm missing here and if so, how I might be best putting that to the challenge in a video later on. Furthermore, it now stands to me to pick the winner of my three finalists in the water-based marker version. This is a tricky one, but honestly, I think though the Crayolas are cool, the fact that they don't have consistent colors, like they have a, a deep red with a brush tip and then a orange with a bullet nib. So Crayolas out, Prism versus Monty Mart. Prism is very clean, very clear. You get a full collection for 20 bucks. On the other hand, 
Prism has a lot more, and as you can see, I could get, get some decent blending effects, but I had four packets of 12, and these were almost $50 per packet. You're gonna be better off getting something like these adult coloring Monty Mart Duo markers. Because like I said, if you're looking for a full range and you're willing to spend $200, you might as well buy yourself a packet of decent alcohol markers, and you can get a full set of the Ohuhus half that price. So, Monty Mart, 20 bucks, water-based markers. These are the winners. Congratulations, Monty Mart. You're well done. You're good. You're good. You're good. It's time to pick a personality for Monty Mart and give them a bit of a persona as their prize. So, Monty Mart supplies, in general to me, feel pretty easygoing and generally approachable. And even on their website, their mission statement is essentially that. They say, who we are, nothing should get in the way of making art. It should be fun, it should be freeing, and it should come naturally to everyone. That is what Monty Mart is all about. They say they're passionate, free-spirited, and real. Our mission is to empower everyone to explore their creativity. And I've found Monty Mart art supplies, in general, have not held that whole, like, exclusivity that the Copics do, or general snootiness of other art supplies. Supplies. So I thought I'd go with a character called Monty who's gonna be a little more laid back and generally sort of lower pressure about how the creative process is pursued. At the end of the day, it's about having fun and getting creative and colors and art and drawings and whatever it is, whatever art supply you use, it's all good. So this is Monty. Welcome to the family. This was really fun. I learned a bit about the, the water-based markers, but I feel like there's a bit more for me to learn. So let me know in the comments what, what I'm missing as far as getting the best use out of the water-based, or if there are some applications that I may not have tried and should give a go. Otherwise, I sincerely hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This has been a lot of fun. I, I guess this is becoming a marker channel now? Who'd have thought? I thought two weeks ago it was becoming a miniature channel. What's going on? There is one thing this channel is and always will be. And it's fun, it's art, and it's creativity. And you're all welcome here. I love you and I hope you had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos over there that you're bound to enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Otherwise, that is it for now. Thank you for watching. I've said thank you for watching several times now, haven't I? I'm very thankful that you watched. So, <laughs> until next time, I'll see you later.